All right, I'm just going to cut to the chase. Civilians in LEGO Star Wars are far more important than you realize. Even somebody who might be in support of something like a civilian battle pack probably does not realize the depth of this. And if you are somebody who does not think that that would be a good idea, I'm pretty confident in saying that I think 90 to 95% of you will have your minds changed by the end of this video. And it all starts with these guys. It may not be as imposing as the Imperial March, nor is it as spine-tingling as the epic Duel of the Fates. But the Cantina Band theme is still undeniably one of the most iconic pieces of Star Wars music. Which might not make so much sense at first. I mean, the main theme throws you back into your seat and lets you know that you are about to watch a masterpiece. The Force theme that plays as Luke watches the double sunset stirs up so much emotion and tells you so much about this character in one immaculate shot. This is just some jazz that plays in the background. By all accounts, it should not be put up with Imperial March and Duel of the Fates and Williams' other masterpieces. But there's a good reason why it is. And it's the same reason why the cantina as a whole has become an icon of the Star Wars universe. And the same reason why this is such a beloved Lego set by fans. Remember this part in A New Hope? Well, if there's a bright center to the universe, you're on the planet that it's farthest from. Almost right off the bat, we are told by the protagonist himself that Tatooine is nothing. It's less than nothing. It's not even worthy of a single footnote in the textbook of galactic history. Now, Tatooine being beyond insignificant has very clearly been retconned by modern Star Wars. And even by some of the Star Wars media that was still coming out when George Lucas owned the franchise. But in 1977, that was it. Tatooine was a nothing planet. And then, just a few scenes after this one, we get this. A vast display of the people populating this speck of nothing. There is an absolutely insane amount of diversity in these shots. Watching this for the first time, you just have to sit there and think, wow, if the most insignificant corner of the galaxy is like this, what else is out there? This made Star Wars cool. This gave Star Wars heart. This gave Star Wars a story. But this, this made it all feel real. These people, these random citizens, is what breathed the life into Star Wars. It's what made you feel like you really were watching something from a galaxy far, far away. The Mos Eisley patrons are what gave depth to everything after A New Hope. I truly believe that, more so than anything, even the groundbreaking special effects that we saw in this first movie, the people in the Moss Eisley Cantina probably had the greatest impact on Star Wars' success. Because truly, the citizens of the Star Wars universe are the most important world-building tool that the franchise has to offer. And if these random citizens are what immerse you in the Star Wars universe, why would random LEGO citizens not immerse you in the LEGO Star Wars theme? We have countless sets from many other factions, but it just feels like there's a missing piece to the LEGO Star Wars universe. And I think that whether consciously or unconsciously, the fandom feels that whole. There is no way that you can convince me that this set has become as popular as it is for the build. I'm sure that there are some people who bought it because they liked the look of it or they needed a lot of tan bricks, but for the most part, the minifigures are what are selling this set. Specifically, these ones. And not just because they're cool and exclusive, but 
because they're normal people. Normal people for mock builders to populate their dioramas with. Normal people for kids to protect from the Empire or Separatists with their Millennium Falcons or gunships. The random, everyday, average Joe is in demand. And you know what? Not everybody is gonna want their random citizens. But that doesn't mean that the concept shouldn't be explored. Not everybody wants a giant, buildable R2-D2. Not everybody wants a 501st battle pack. Just because you don't want a set or think that a concept is a stupid idea doesn't mean that everybody thinks that way. Because that's one of the great things about LEGO, is that if you don't like a set, you don't have to buy it. And honestly, at this point, with some of the comments that I get, I could probably make an entire video talking about that point specifically. But that's a rant for another day. The point is, just because the citizens might not be something for everybody, doesn't mean that they should be completely ignored. I truly think that it would behoove LEGO to test the waters a little bit here. Throw a little something out there, see how it does. If it doesn't do well, then let it fade into obscurity. If it does do well, then you can keep building off of it. And there are two ways that I can see LEGO testing the water a little bit. The first and most obvious way would be to just continue doing Moss Eisley Cantina type of stuff. And by that I mean popular scenes with a lot of citizens. I think that anybody who's been invested in the LEGO Star Wars community for more than a couple of months by now could probably tell you that a Dex's Diner would be sold out for weeks upon weeks. Some other potential locations that I can think of would be Maz Kanata's castle from The Force Awakens, although I would completely understand if they did not want to make this since it is sequel territory. Or maybe even part of the stadium of the Maz Espa pod race. But really, sets like these are few and far between. There just aren't that many places iconic enough for this. And that's why, even though it may be less likely, I think that the second path that LEGO could take is a much better option. This idea actually comes from a viewer, and I think that it is a fantastic concept. You take your LEGO City car and you reskin it to be a Coruscant airspeeder. Take your LEGO City airplane and turn it into a interstellar civilian transport. I really do think that there is a lot of potential from a concept like this. I mean, any time that Star Wars takes us to Coruscant, there are more different kinds of speeders than you could possibly hope to count. And there are lots of random civilians piloting those speeders. And you know, start off slow. Have a $20, $30 civilian speeder with a named character for starters, see how that does. And then you can start to up it up a little bit if it ends up picking up steam. And you wouldn't necessarily have to replace other Star Wars slots for these civilian freighters and such. You can always change the number of sets that release in any given year. If they sell well, then maybe a whole new sub-theme of Star Wars could be started. But surely it couldn't hurt to at least try something new and just see how it does before completely writing it off. And who knows, maybe there's a lot less demand for Star Wars aliens and civilians than I think there is. Maybe it's just me and a handful of other people that don't want their LEGO collection completely dominated by legions of clone troopers and stormtroopers. But even if that is the case, for reasons that I pointed out earlier in the video, I still think that it would be worth giving civilians at least a little bit more attention. I am curious though to hear if you think that civilians would be a worthwhile thing to have in LEGO Star Wars. If you do, then please leave a like on this video, please comment, it'll help this video get out to more people, and then 
we can get some conversation going and maybe it'll happen one day. It's all about conversation, man. If you want something, you gotta talk about it. That's how we got the 501st Battle Pack, the UCS Venator, and lots of other stuff. And on the flip side, if even after this whole video you still don't want citizens, then also talk about that. But whatever the case, if you made it this far, you probably like the sound of my voice, so you should check out some end screen stuff.